Good evening. Welcome to the July 12th, 2023 meeting of the Delhi Township Board of Trustees. Welcome all those in attendance, those watching from home. Uh, we will start out as we do with the Pledge of Allegiance and then we will have our moment of silence. Our moment of silence tonight is sometimes complacency sets in in our worlds. You know, we just celebrated the 4th of July and we're celebrating our freedom and independence and and our veterans and our soldiers and everything that's gone on. That sometimes once that's finished, we kind of forget and we just move on. So this moment is for that, as we remember all those who served and protected the greatest country in the world. They're called veterans, they're called heroes. We remember them, we remember all of our armed forces, we remember all of our first responders, medical personnel, nurses, STNAs, nurse practitioners, you name it. All of those who serve and protect and keep us healthy and safe and heal us. So this moment of silence goes to them. Please stand. Thank you so much. Approval of the minutes, please. Mr. Luby. We have a motion to approve the minutes from the Board of Trustees regular meeting on June 28th, 2023. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion approved. Motion to approve the payment of overtime for pay period ending June 27th, 2023. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Motion to approve bills for payment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Yes. 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 Motion approved. Report from the fiscal officer, Mr. Luby. For a significant transaction since our last meeting, we have a check going to Turner Construction for $1.9 million for the uh, uh, Town Square project, and our payroll on 7-6 was $337,000. That's all I have. Thank you so much. Trustee correspondence, please. Trustee Sturts. Yes. Um, you know, I like love to give shout outs to our employees when we hear from um, people out in the township. So um, Officer Steinle responded to a call recently, and it was about some juveniles and pranking and so on and so forth. And the uh, people that called about it wanted to say how good he was, how funny he was with the kids. He stayed with the kids, talked to them for a while. And uh, just, you know, they ended it with Officer Steinle is definitely an asset to your organization. We wanted you to know what a great person and representative he is for the Delhi Police Department. So he stopped the problem, you know, just by being kind to him, listening and, and showing up and, and, you know, just being all around good guy. So thank you for that. Um, second of all, just a little something. I was talking with um, <clears throat> our uh, parks director about pickleball. I was there today trying to play pickleball, and trying is the operative word here. Um, and a gentleman came up and was talking to somebody I was playing with, and he normally plays at another court, and I don't want, want to say what it is, but it's in the area. And I said, well, so you know, do you come to Delhi a lot? He goes, yes. He goes, we like your courts way better than the, the other ones. So thank you, Randy. And uh, it's nice to hear that people appreciate what we, we're doing out there. And you get recognized for what you did. So thank you. And no, I still can't play pickleball well. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Seavey. Yes, I'd like to um, say thank you to our, our risk reduction person in the fire department, Bobby Honert. Um, we've had we've had kind of a sad story happen here in the last week and she's taken a particular personal interest in making sure that our resident that's involved in this issue is well cared for and chief it's just it was very touching to talk to Bobby mm -hmm. and the care that she gives when she makes these calls you know we don't have a social services department so when we have somebody like a Bobby Honert or a Kaylee Vickers in the police department we are really heads above other places and i just i just want to say to bobby thank you for caring and thank you for everything that she does along with the fire department thank you i have two items that i would like to uh bring up one of course thank you uh assistant chief braun for the recent numbers on the red light violations it seems like you put even more hours into it and have less violations which makes me think we're starting to get the message out there. I have still yet to see 
it on social media network saying, you know, Delhi's watching, slow down, slow down, like they put everything else when you get a bad French fry at McDonald's. <laughs> However, this has not come up yet, which I'm waiting to see, and I hope it does. I hope the word gets out uh, that don't run a red light in Delhi, although just coming to this meeting, about got run over at, at Neeb and Delhi, trying to make a right on the Neeb, and someone just came right through it. Um, which leads me to the, uh, the horrible story. Uh, it was just a week ago. Uh, there was an auto accident at uh, Ebenezer and uh, Devil's Backbone? Please, Please Warsaw. Warsaw. Right over by Dubers there. A car driven by, as I understand it, someone younger with some of his buddies, ran the red light, knocked into a van, knocked the van upside down with a woman and three children inside. So it's not fun, it's not funny. When you see the light red, you stop. When you see it yellow, you don't enter the intersection. Yellow means clear the intersection. If you're not in it, stop. Parents watching, tell your kids. If you're watching and you think, oh, Delhi, we're not, we're not siding for red lights, guess again, we are. This crap that goes on in the city of Cincinnati and those around us who don't stop them and they just all do what they want to do is not in Delhi. It ain't going to float. You'll get a ticket, and even a couple of these, I understand, we're actually even driving under suspension. So good for you. Thank you, our Delhi police, for, for getting them and stopping them and uh, hopefully saving a life. Those three got out of their vans, even though they were flipped upside down. They got out and uh, are healing. But that's how serious this is. It, it's just absolutely crazy what people think that just anything goes. Right is wrong, wrong is right. That's the world we live in, right? Wrong. Not in Delhi. The second part is, thank you again, our Delhi police, a nice, I have to watch my words, a nice, wonderful person living in the city of Cincinnati decided to come into Delhi at Foley and Anderson Ferry on his motorcycle and shoot his weapon in the air. Luckily, somebody saw that, called the police, and Delhi's finest, and I say this in all seriousness, it is the best. Our police division, our fire, are the best safety services you could get for what you get. These guys grabbed this guy back off of Foley in a little subdivision as he cowardly probably tried to escape. Being the buffoon that he is, he was arrested and charged as he lives down off of the lower part, down inside the city, down off lower Delhi, down that way. And my heart went out to him as he's driving that motorcycle probably every day on that horrible, nasty road, <laughs> not fixed yet, <laughs> as all of our residents come in and out of Delhi. We are sorry, folks. We hear it. We're frustrated, too. That road down there is ridiculous, and we've waited now till July, July for them to do anything. They did a couple patchworks, even put some pretty pink pothole filling in there for a while, if you remember that. It's ridiculous, and I'm going to say it. I don't care. You think this would happen on the east side? I don't think so. This happens on the east side, it'd be fixed like that. That's a problem. That's a major problem. And we've waited long enough for them to do their study to want to put a stoplight in down at Lower Delhi is crazy. My last point. I was over in uh, Florence yesterday filling up my tank for 306 a gallon. I go over off of Glenway and it's 329. I go up on Delhi Pike, Brian, and I know we've talked about this, uh, 359, 369, 349. That's crazy. That's absolutely ridiculous. So I want to give that number out one more time, if you don't mind, Brian, because if in fact you think that there's some type of gouging or something going on, which is your decision to make, uh, here's a number that you can call and just say, will you at least look into it? And I applaud the gentleman, I can never, Nick is it, that owns the, the gas station across the street from Kroger's? He intentionally keeps it a dime cheaper. So he's not going to do what everybody else is doing, like your Kroger's, like your UDFs and these others. And this isn't a matter of supporting local business. We all support our local business, but that's ridiculous. UDFs, Kroger's, charging what they're charging. Why? Because it takes longer to get up to Delhi for it as compared to these other places or deep inside Green Township? It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, Brian, I'm looking for that number here. Can you turn your mic on and tell us that number? If you think the prices of gas or something funny is going on, please call this number. That's funny, Mr. Davis. Most time people are telling me to turn my mic off. 1-800- <laughs> <clears throat> 
1-800-282-0515. There's also an online complaint that you can fill out at ohioattorneygeneral.gov. Ohioattorneygeneral.gov. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Together we can make a difference. I'm tired of being the only one calling. Please call up there. <coughs> Hound them. <clears throat> we shouldn't have to just go down Anderson Ferry right inside the city or right across the border into Green and get gas 20 cents cheaper than here. We want to support our businesses. We do support our businesses, but we don't want to be ripped off. That's my own opinion. That being said, we do have a public hearing tonight on tax budget hearing, if you would. We have a motion to open this hearing. We have a motion to open the uh, public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Discussion, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, board. Uh, Your mic on. Thank you again. Thanks, sir. Good evening, board. Uh, so what I present to you tonight is the 2024 tax budget. This budget has been developed from um, information from the department heads, as well as forecasting changes from the 2023 appropriations budget. Uh, all funds um, are proposed to end the 2024 fiscal year with a positive balance or zero if the fund is uh, planned to close out. Um, again, this is the this is tax budget. Uh, I do expect that there's going to be some significant changes uh, as we uh, adjust, especially for DTS uh, operations and maintenance. So uh, Mr. Luby and I had an opportunity to sit down and finalize this budget. There were a couple of funds that um, we had to get to the bottom of. But uh, unless there's any questions on a, on a specific item, uh, I'm requesting that this budget be approved tonight so that we can meet the deadline with Hamilton County to submit by July 20th. Thank you. Just yes. This has been open for uh, for public review for the uh, since I believe June 30th. Okay. Do we have any other comments? Any public comments at all regarding this uh, tax budget? Mr. Luby, I have a question. Do we anticipate the LGF going up in the 2024? Um, I mean, it's all of the Starbucks coffee going up, but I mean, there is some. Increase. As far as the revenues go, we, we're typically very conservative with our revenues for the tax budget. Um, so, no, there is no increase that is included okay. in the revenue. For I think it's only like 1.75. I mean, it's not going to make us or break us. Okay. Very good. Any other comments? No. Nope. We have a motion then to close the public hearing. Motion to close public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Motion approved. We now have a, a nuisance appeal mm -hmm. to resolution 2023-074, please. Mr. Luby. Motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. The hearing is now open um, for those that will be discussing this issue, this appeal, come forward. If you would please, is there anyone else that will be with you? Just you? Okay. If you please raise your right hand. Mr. Gleason, do you solemnly swear that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God, both of you. I do. Thank you. Please be seated. Thank you. Where are we here? We're going to... Uh, Presentation of facts, findings by our zoning inspector, Mr. Roach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. As your board recalls, back on May 31st, uh, your board declared this property a nuisance for accumulated debris, um, resolution number 202374. Um, Mr. Gleason was at that meeting and he, he voiced that he did want to appeal. On June the 9th, um, 2023, we did receive a written um, request for an appeal to come in front of your board to um, see if he can keep the couch in question on the front porch. And I just want to kind of give you a, 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 just an update on the couch on the front porch. I was actually there this morning. There's, I don't know if there's an updated picture in your mm -hmm. packet there. Mm -hmm. Is there this morning? Or that on the board? No, we, we, okay. we won't need it, but thank okay. you. Yep. As you can see, it was time stamped at 730 this morning. The couch is still remaining. Just a kind of quick description of the couch. The couch is, in my opinion, is an indoor couch. It's made of indoor material, some type of leather. Um, it's not conducive to the outdoor elements. It's going to mold, mildew, and 
uh, emit odors over time. Also, with the type of stuffing and everything, it just becomes uh, a nuisance for you know insects, critters to nest in, make nests, and, and stay there. So, unless you have any other questions for me. Any questions, Trust Trustee Sturts? Mm, no. Trustee Picture Sheevy? I'm sorry? No. No. Okay. Mr. Chair, I actually have a question. If you don't mind. Mr. Miller. Uh, what's the condition of the rest of the property? Has has the rest of the violation been abated? Yeah, so the property was actually declared it was actually declared for excessive vegetation and accumulated debris. Debris the, the excessive vegetation has been brought into compliance. Um, there is other dr debris remaining on the property that we'll deal with at a separate issue. The issue at hand tonight is just the couch for the appeal. Just the couch. That's, yes, yes, Trustee C V. Was there a violation filed for the debris yet? Yes, that was that was that was uh, declared back on May thirty first. That's all part of that. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Uh, you know, the, there was additional debris on the property. Um, the appeal is for the couch only, and based on the picture that I'm seeing from this morning, there's still debris on the on the porch. So if if the rest of it has if if the rest of the violation has not already been abated. Um, that needs to be brought to the attention of the of the board for the hearing. And then we'll we will we'll bring we'll uh, address that as well. Yes, you can see other, uh, other debris on the front porch, and, and without the appeal, I think we still have the right to go and we could remove the debris that's still remaining. There's tires in the driveway, um, and there's other items that you know fall under our uh, definition of accumulated debris that we could address. Thank you, Mr. Gleason. Welcome mm -hmm. back. What say ye? Uh, the debris, I'd love to Tony to itemize everything he wants done, and I'll do it immediately. Uh, I thought this was, like he said, just about the couch at this point. But I'll, so I'll talk to him uh, about the debris and whatever he wants moved, I'll move it immediately. Any other comments to be made? Trustee Sturts? No, I'm, I just... You know, what, what is your basis for substantiating that you want to keep this couch on your porch? I mean, considering it is not outdoor furniture. Uh, it's just uh, Joe's hauling had it. Uh, he, he, he got it to get rid of it. It's in pretty decent condition, and I just enjoy sitting on my porch. I'm lucky to have a really nice porch there. It's very comfortable. I sit out there a lot. Uh, I live alone. That's all I really do. I sit on my porch in the evening. It's everything he said about it, I'm sure is true, uh, but I just really enjoy having the, the couch there. I, I enjoy it a lot, that's about all I could say. Trustee Seavey. I'd like you to have you enjoy your porch, but I'd like to have you enjoy it on outdoor furniture. Uh, I fear for your health with this being out indoor furniture in the elements of the outside. Um, I'm afraid you're putting yourself in danger. And I think, Tony, you've, you've kind of addressed that by saying it, it could accumulate mold or bugs or whatever. And, and we don't want that for you. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Gleason, we will actually pick up a motion, accepting, rejecting, whichever it is, uh, when we get to our community development and, uh, department but I, I have to tell you mr. Gleason and I think I I won't answer for these but I, I, I believe they would feel the same I like you I really do you came to the other meeting you were respectful you were asking questions what does what what's what's the code what can I do how's the appeal process work what and you walked through the system I respect that you know and uh, I don't know what the outcome will be with the motion but uh, thank you that's how government is supposed to work you know, when you have something that you that you want to fight for, you fight for it. Yes, and uh, you might swing and miss. You might hit it out of the park. But at least you took the time to to, to I feel something. the same way. Thank you. Thank you. Honor. Thank you. Very good. Thank you so much. We will then have have a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Uh, wait, Tony gets another thing, right? Are, are you done, Tony? Unless you would have other questions okay, for me, okay, Trustee Sturts. Okay, um, I just want to no. make sure. I didn't know how formal that yeah. was. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank there were you. no other questions, and we a motion to close the hearing. Motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Oh, all those in favor? Yes. 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 <clears throat> Thank you, Thank Mr. You, Roach. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Gleason. <clears throat> Moving to the fire department, please. 
We have a motion to accept the voluntary resignation of part-time firefighter EMT, Sean P. Murphy, effective July 12th, 2023. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Yes, yes motion approved. Chief, Present. where is he going? <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, trustees. Okay. He got hired full-time at uh, Hamilton Fire Department. Okay. Uh, he was one of the three I'd mentioned a few meetings back. Mm. Okay. Couldn't remember. Thank you. Resolution, please. Re resolution 2023-92, declaring the necess uh, necessity of levying an additional tax on excess of the 10 mil limitation within the township at a rate not exceeding 2 and 75, 1.99 mils for each $1 of taxable value and requesting the county auditor to certify matters in connection therewith, declaring an emergency and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Discussion, please. Thank you, trustees. Steve As Campbell. you recall, in, um, in previous years, uh, so this is going back to 2018, we followed a similar format, presented to the board three options for certification of levy funds so that we could make a determination at a later date as to which one best suited for growth and operation of the fire department. So tonight's introduction um, are three uh, alternate levels of additional funding. So these are levied funds in addition to what we currently are operating on. Um, first example is a 1.99 mil. Second example is a 2.5 mil. And third example is a 2.75 mil. Um, just a little history, in 2018, we passed a 3.45 mil at that point in time. And it was a rather directed levy at increasing our staffing by three full-time firefighter paramedics. We did have three promotions on the docket. So tonight, it's our first stab at giving financial figures that are in the window of where I feel that we can operationally function for these are set at five years so all three examples are what I was looking at what we could do five years out um, in terms of some of the assumptions uh, if you look on your second page for the levy design itself this was done on a zero base budget so this didn't take into account anything that we've done in the past or future from that standpoint it built from the ground up Ideally, um, what I'm working with is the full-time collective bargaining agreement is good through 2025. So those are known numbers from a wage and salary standpoint benefits. Those are good in terms of prediction. Um, this does consider a remarkable um, increase on part-time. It's just the, been the perpetual theme <laughs> week after week when we're here to talk about recruitment and retention, bringing in part-time folks. Um, we were really off base from what they are looking for in terms of wages, what we are offering in terms of wages, and we've really kind of not kept the pace with what's up there to be competitive. So looking at these levy funds, all three of these examples would allow us to invest considerably on the part-time side. Salaries, um, there, there one, there's one note where how did we look at the funding between the 199 and the 275 and why are they so much less than what we did the last time? So with this five-year cycle, looking at our current staffing rate, there was a couple points where we, um, we were able to reduce our expenses in 2020 by taking on ARPA funds, which offset about a million point two in salaries. So with our normal levy funding cycle, um, we had much higher carryover towards those later years. So then we don't have to go to the public and ask for any additional funds to make up. So certainly that's one of the things you're looking at in your carryovers. And if you look at these examples that I gave you and you look out at the year five mark, you can see what the anticipated levy carryover would be with the lowest amount at that 199, just under a million dollars, versus the next two examples, you're at two and a half and 3.1. Again, very conservative in that fashion. Also, one of the big things that changed this year was our hospitalization. We saw a 60% increase. Delhi's, uh, or the fire, just the fire department's expenditure for hospitalization went from like six 
620, 630,000 to over a million dollars in one year. I can't consciously uh, project out those considerable 60% increases. Um, again, looking at this, it's at 15% each year. However, that we do have the ability to kind of make an adjustment on the fly, you know, sometimes with budgeting and things like that. Um, but I, I did not want to go over bounds and, and start throwing in 20%, 25%, 60% figures because I think that's just runaway. And really what it does for me is when you start looking at my budgetary line item for personnel costs being over $3 million and five years out from now, $2.5 million to, to give them hospitalization and benefits, it's, it doesn't seem right. So it's not worth going down that road. All operating expenses have a five-year look back, and I've adjusted accordingly for anything that I saw in terms of interest increase and things like that. So looking back and then moving forward, that's a it was a hard reset. Two other uh, mentions, um, these capital expenditures that are built into this levy design are only for small capital expenses. So it would cover, you know, turnout gear, turnout, or um, you know, rescue gear, replacement tools, things like that, um, chase cars, staff cars, small items. I still have big ticket TEF requests that this it's not included in this levy budget. Um, you know, and again, we've talked about it in the past when we discussed levies, when you bring those larger capital items, those really take a hit in terms of the levy funds. And that's why it's always been much easier challenge to, to deal with on the TIF level when we're replacing engines, facilities, and things like that. Um, you know, from the standpoint of the fire department financially, kind of give you an example of where we're at. In terms of personnel, we're at 52 personnel, uh, and we manage $10.2 million in capital assets. That's facilities, fleet, and equipment. So you think about the cost, 11% uh, of my budget is just to cover those uh, operating funds, to, to manage that fleet in that. So 86% of my funds all do go towards personnel. And again, what we've seen in the transition, uh, what we've struggled with in terms of staffing is far less uh, reliability and support on the part-time side. We've always started to move in that direction of getting full-time traction. However, that has a uh, an accelerated cost to it that you don't see with part-time staffing. Um, one thing I would like the board to consider too is when we're looking at these three things, we're not making a decision tonight on what, what it is, but having an open discussion on what these three options give us in terms of flexibility um, and what we want to do going forward. Um, and like I said, because we've only done this in five-year cycles, that's what's presented to the board tonight. Um, I feel extending it beyond that point, my crystal ball is not that good. I don't think any of us had 2020 on the horizon when we were passing a levy in 18. And that just came with some significant drawbacks. My feeling is, can we manage a five-year? Yes, we've done it repeatedly since 2005. Essentially, every levy has kind of marched out those five-year cycles. We've been able to stay within budget and do what we needed to do as a, as a fire department. So um, that's reasonable. The best estimates do follow closer to 2024, 2025, and 2026, because we, I know mostly of what we're dealing with in those, in those respects. Thank you. Any questions? No, Trustee Sturtz. Yes, I do have a question. This is based on five years, mm -hmm. which aligns us with the police. Mm -hmm. Can we go off that cycle? And does your crystal ball get a little clearer if we go to three years or four years so that we are offsetting coming and asking for both levies in the same year? Certainly, the predictions are better on the front end, so yes. Um, three years is doable even under these scenarios the three-year cycle is doable you can see I've highlighted 2026 for the board um, you can see those are the carryover numbers for a three-year based on these figures um, it's very reasonable to assume that yes a three-year wouldn't be an issue um, with any of these three funding levels the uh, issue going 
short is not the problem. Going long is the problem. Um, we really, I, I think by design in terms of how we've done it, selling it as a five-year Letting the letting the public know this is what we expected to do, and this at minimum we'll be able to get five years out of it. We've said and done that. So going forward, if we say three years, it'll be three years. If we say five, it'll be five. The idea is that that our assurance that whatever we go for, that's how we set it up in the sale. So it's a it's a matter of marketing. But yes, it's much easier to go on the short end than it is to go on the long end. You have those we have those funds available to us. Thank you. Trustee Seavey? Doug, let's try to explain how, step by step, how we do this. Because we're going to look at three millages here mm -hmm. that are going to go to the auditor for an approval that we could run any of these three, correct? Correct. All right. So, people, we are not approving any one of these tonight we are giving the permission for these millages to go to the auditor for approval okay so because uh, that always gets everyone twisted and it <laughs> is know. a little confusing so I know you know don't don't feel alone if you got lost in this conversation then when it comes back we will go through a more a closer detailed rationale of what each one of them will do or not do and we'll make that decision or three years or five years so and then we're talking timing and timing on this would be the election of November 8th is it, is it 8th, 8th? this year yeah, November yeah. No, of 20 no, yeah, yeah. So November of 23 funds voted on this year would not be approved until 24 go. so yes that, that is true so you're you would be voting on this in the November election but the cash itself that it generates will not come available to the fire department until 24. Yes. Okay. So there's there's some operational and timing things that we we kind of get caught up in, and I just wanted to make sure that everyone understands those. Um, you know, we're not any different than any other corporation when we talk about 86% of our expense goes to personnel. When you consider the cost of hospitalization and the cost of pension and it's a lot it's a lot but you know what these are the people who protect us these are the people who run in when a lot of us are trying to get out so keep all those things in mind Doug will go down to the auditor and and see what you come back with and we'll um we'll vote on it then but I wanted everyone to understand that yeah, certainly I'm working off of estimates, so the auditor confirms what we anticipate to be certified revenue. So they tell us, with this millage, you will be expected to generate this revenue. And again, I'm working off numbers that, you know, the police used with theirs, um, but you don't have, and they're good, they're, they're good numbers. You don't know, or you can't officially confirm it until the auditor says, yes, this is what they're right. going to bring in. Mr. Luby. Uh, Cheryl, you had mentioned one thing about the uh, the cost is primarily personnel. I mean, yeah. you know, we have to we've got six percent, and we have to stay competitive with every other fire department to attract you know the talent. So, like I said, we're, we're no different than any other business, any other township. Um, it's just it's you know, it's just a tough nut to crack. But you know, we we have no other choice. Um, to do it. And the second thing is, you know, we, we were very fortunate with the ARPA funds. Yes. You know, one, one, one point, you know, over a million dollars for uh, payroll for both police and fire. So, you know. Yeah, this, this certainly, and this is kind of my advent to, we're not trying to gouge anybody. Had those ARPA funds not recovered the losses that we were kind of looking at because we had to reduce number of runs, redu reduction in um, our reimbursement. You have all these pressures that you're having in terms of operation. Plus, I have folks that are homesick. I mean, you can't get people. You can't make people healthy. And without that, these numbers would be at least a mil higher or more. So, yes, the ARPA funds were uh, a big factor in extending this to the point that it, that it got extended. Again, when I'm not able to 
retain part-timers, those are wages that go unspent. I'm not a genius in saving money because people can't stay. That's that's the reality of the situation we're in. So those are untapped funds, but it's not because we're not trying. We just have a hard time, you know, retaining them when they're getting so many full-time jobs elsewhere. Just the competition's atrocious, you know. Um, but you're right. You know, the ARPA funds did have a, a good offset to keep these numbers much lower. And I would agree. It is a competitive business. And we had this discussion, I think, at the last trustee meeting of how competitive it is and candidates that aren't out there. Um, and the ones that are are going to obviously higher paid and, and, uh, and things like that. So the focus is always, I think, on recruitment and retaining, retaining what you have. <laughs> Correct. Um, because as I said at the beginning of the meeting, our fire division, our safety services are the best. Our response times are incredible. We want to maintain that and keep that. Um, and I'm keying off on something that you had said, that, you know, what each one of these three, as they go down to the auditor, what each one of these three would actually bring in needs to be looked at. And, and I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone sitting here, what our residents can afford. Sure. <laughs> That's a huge piece. And, uh, you know, we want to keep what's nice. That is absolutely right. So we want to make sure with the levy that we do what's right for, for the fire, what's right for our residents, and that we're all on the same page. Um, and hopefully at the end of it, once we decide which one, we will be. And I think okay. we will. Thank you so much, Chief. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? I move to dispense with the second reading of this okay. resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution all those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading yes 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 mr luby please call the roll mrs sturtz yes mrs Seavey. yes mr davis yes resolution passes resolution 2023-93 declaring the necessity of levying an additional tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation within the township at a rate not exceeding 2.5 mils for each one dollar of taxable value and requesting the county auditor to certify matters in connection therewith declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution in 2023-94, declaring the, the necessity of levying an additional tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation within the township at a rate not exceeding 2.75 mils for each $1 of taxable value and requesting the county auditor to certify matters in connection therewith declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. And I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Parks and Recreation, please. <clears throat> By the way, Chief, good job on the fire yesterday. Uh, wow. To the troops. You saved, you saved somebody's home. That was wonderful. <clears throat> Mr. Soupy, it seems like the park is really busy these days based off of your tan. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of fun in the sun at that park, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Awesome. What's going on? Uh, just to touch upon uh, something really quick, which I've, I guess that you've heard on the media. Uh, we've had a... Uh, an organization questioned some uh, domestic ducks we have, and they offered up their assistance. Um, uh, sadly, went to the press right away, and then now on that notion, um, it brought on a, a little different like issue. So now we have uh, a couple organizations offering their assistance. So now I'm looking through a couple different opportunities, people, and uh, we're going to pick the right one and have them uh, come in and remove and rehome the domestic uh, duck. Do we still have the duck hut for the wild ones? Yes, we still put that out okay. each year. Because they didn't mention that we take care of the wild right. ones. No, it kind of came up and uh, blew out of hand really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a whole lot of difference a year to year what we do. Um, uh, it's it's uh, personal opinions, I imagine. I'm not a duck expert by any means, so um, we do take care of them as the best we can. Uh, we're not wildlife authorities, so we don't. We don't maintain them. They are wildlife in their name. They get, they come and go as they please. So 
You know, we personally don't own them. It was them. Ohio DNR that basically said we needed a shelter with straw on the bottom of it, yes. and that was sufficient for the for the yes, wild and, guys. So in the turn, um, the, the benefit is we only had one organization offering up uh, assistance, but now we have a few. Uh, we can pick and choose and kind of uh, pick the best one and the right fit. So Maybe they can be on a yearly rotation. <laughs> we possibly might need that. <laughs> Come in, June. Do they want any wild ones to take with them? <laughs> uh, they, they, uh, they'll probably leave a few of those. Yeah, I bet they would. Okay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Soupy, how did this get to the press? I, I'm curious, who, was it the gentleman that's doing this? One of the organization gentlemen uh, contacted them really quickly. Um, okay. I, I don't know for what reason. Uh, we just kind of went from there. And uh, I guess he was thinking it was kind of the only process, but there's a few other people out there that are doing the same thing. So we're going we're gonna to do a, a good pick and choose on it and find out what's best for the, for the decision. Good. And we have done a little due diligence with uh, ODNR, uh, Division of Wildlife. So domestic ducks do not follow uh, or fall under the same regulations as migratory birds. So they can be, they can be collected. They, there's no state... Uh, level regulation on it. Yeah. yeah, and hopefully you choose the right one, and that they're not a bunch of quacks. No, bump. That un that is not the only one we've heard all week. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's great. I, I think it's good that there's organizations that do that because absolutely. I mean, if if they're accurate in saying that these domesticated ducks are not going to survive winter, which the one Channel 64 one of them said. Then absolutely, we would certainly want to make sure that you know we do the best we can. But I'm glad that yep. others are willing to come in and, for sure. and uh, scoop them up. Yeah. Yep. Well, well nobody's going on. Nobody's uh, ducking the issue. That's for sure. They are <laughs> not going to duck the issue. <laughs> oh my God. We got a million of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, we've gone serious. That now. was foul. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Mm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So uh, I guess along with other stuff, we have a concert coming up next week. Um, uh, as Trustee Sturt said, uh, Pickleball is in operation, but we will do a grand opening once everybody's together. We'll get that set up. We'll do a ribbon cutting for that as well. So Good. Perfect. Parks always look great. It's absolutely amazing um, who all comes to the park. Yeah. I mean, it, you see everybody. It's a community. You see um, every nationality you can imagine, yes. and everyone just having fun, and and thank for our police detail. We always have the police detail up there, so you can stay safe up there. But it's just uh, there's some good things, and there's been a lot of money invested, good yes. money invested. So we want to keep it looking nice. Love the cameras. Yeah, feel even safer up there. If somebody does something crazy, we can ding them pretty good, and we'll get all the cameras block cameras are, going, Chief. We'll, we'll get cameras are definitely going. keeping us busy, uh, yeah. trying to catch a few things. So yeah. yeah I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Chairman Davis, can yes. I ask a question? Um, the question, and I did not know the answer, so I'm coming to you. The yellow tape on the one big, I guess, a soccer field by yes. the playground. What's going on there? Uh, we did have a break, and um, we did this every year originally. But the like, as Trustee Davis said, the uh, the the park has been very crowded, and it's very. Uh, everything is being used all the time. So w in the past, we've had gaps in uh, play in, in soccer and football, so we were able to reseed, aerate, and get that field looking pristine. But over the years, the traffic has been nonstop, 100% used, so we haven't been able to do that. And it had matted down certain sections of where the goals go in the center area. So we positioned ourselves with Dan, let us know. We had about two to three months where there was nothing in there. So we kind of just made cautioned off the center areas where we could – patch up that area, regrow grass, and get it going again. Okay. So the sprinkler systems are running, and uh, it seems to be working. I haven't seen anybody in there. They're playing around the outsides, which is going well. So. Thank you. Yep. Did we uh, have a, an unofficial marathon up there last weekend? <laughs> I saw the signs. <laughs> I, uh, it wasn't told to us, but it was just a shelter rental, and it came to be that uh, orienteering, they had a little get-together, and they did a little uh, race through the park. Oh, there so, you go. Yes. All right. And Randy, the pictures of Floral Paradise that we posted on social media, it's so great to hear positive comments about Floral Paradise Gardens again. It was wonderful, and the pictures were great. The bridge looks wonderful, and thank you, thank you, thank you to those volunteers working Floral Paradise Gardens. And I think you're always looking for people to join the party, right? Yes, I, I talked to a couple of the volunteers the uh, day before yesterday, and they had a new one come in, and they are doing very well. They divert it right to us. They sign the volunteer form, and they just Great. take it right in and get to going. So, yeah, it's very nice. Thank you. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Shuby. Thank you.
Police Department, please. Chief we Howarth. We have a motion to promote police recruit Emma G. Girdler to the police officer at the rate per the collective bargaining agreement with the Delhi Police Association, effective June 20th, 2023. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Welcome, yes. Emma. Yes, welcome. welcome. Chief, will we, the township and the officials, get to meet her? Will she be at a meeting? When's that? Yeah, we're doing a ceremonial swearing in the next township. Next meeting? meeting? Oh, 28th good. 28th. I think that's good. the 28th. Yeah. 26th. 26th. The next one, two weeks from now. I understand yep. that she was uh, top in her class. Yep. Yep. And she's said yes to Delhi. Good yes. for her. Yes. Very she's, excited. She's going to yeah. be yep. great. She'll be great. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Public Works, no agenda items. Hey, I have an agenda item. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, trustees. I don't really have a whole lot to talk about. Just uh, wanted to mention there is a lot of construction throughout the township. I know Duke's trimming trees, plenty of internet projects going on, line boring, Duke. Um, our road project is in full force and moving fast. Um, today, we kind of had light, light notice, but we did our yearly rejuvenation project throughout the township. Um, on various roads, you'll see like signs where it says loose sand and stuff. And that's something we do every year to prolong the life of the roads. And then, um, I don't know, uh, as far as uh, Fairbanks, I just wanted to mention, um, so the residents know that the township, the trustees, and I know I push a lot for all these roads in years in advance. Um, Mount Averna, we've been pushing to get that paid, which will happen this year. Um, Fairbanks wasn't even on a list three years ago, and then it did get to a list. So we are proactive on getting roads paved, and I think overall we've done okay. So any questions? Fairbanks on your list? <laughs> Not on our list. Okay. I'm saying. Oh, okay. Getting it yeah. moved up. The, I was going to say, city, whatever it takes, just get it done. <laughs> the city of Cincinnati didn't have it on a list until we reached out, I think, three years ago. Right three, four years ago, I remember talking to the board and we pushed and they did put it on a list. Unfortunately, there was some utility issues and what have you, but it is slated for this summer and uh, contractors, I believe, are already awarded, awarded the contract. The contract's so, been awarded. Are yes. they definitely putting a stoplight in at those? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Yeah. But okay. it is set and, you know, we still have a pardon upon a rough road ahead of us with construction, but luckily Route 50 was paved, I believe, last year at Anderson Ferry. So when that construction starts, I know I would suggest going that route when possible. Well, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely beautiful by the time it's finished in 2028. <laughs> well, I was going to say, didn't they say it's going to take like 18 months? a few months. months. <laughs> didn't they yeah. say it was going to take 18 months? Um, I know there was a letter. period of time. Yeah, there's a, it's a good amount of oh, it's work a long to be time. done. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But well, we appreciate it, and, and I know I hammer it pretty good, but your due diligence and, and what you do to kind of yeah. let them know that we are here and we matter, it's much, very much appreciated. And, uh, and again, we're not going to put up with a whole lot. We, we all work together here, guys. So, uh, you know, don't tell us one thing, and here we are in July approaching August, and you haven't done anything. It's like... The residents deserve better. This is our main artery. Yeah, I know we definitely want the gateways to Delhi looking good, and we, yeah. we we put the effort into, but we're our hands are tied a little bit. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Administration, please. Resolution. We have resolution 2023-95, adopting the tax budget for fiscal year commencing January 1st, 2024, pursuant to RC 5705.28. Declaring an emergency and dispensing with second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Discussion on this resolution. Any additional? Nope. No. Okay. Thank you. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. Yes. Yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution of 2023-96, authorizing and updating the payroll administrative agreement with the Ohio Public Employees Deferred Compensation Board to offer both pre-tax deferrals and Roth contributions that meet the requirements of Chapter 148 of the Ohio Revised Code, authorizing the Township Administrator to execute and deliver the necessary documents and dispensing with a second reading. 
I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Discussion on this resolution. Um, Skyler, this sounds like a good thing, yeah? Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, we're actually uh, continuing in a, an existing practice, so this is just keeping us uh, up to date with uh, um, Ohio Deferred Comp Standards. Good. And uh, Melanie, thank you to Melanie, yes? Hey. Absolutely. Yes. A lot of time and uh, talents go into to that. We just do a quick motion or resolution to pass it, but a lot of footwork, a lot of studying numbers. So we appreciate that. Any other discussion? Okay, I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes, yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2023-97, authorizing the township administrator to spend greater than 10000 on behalf of the township and dispense with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion? This is uh, emergency repairs, actually replacement of two AC units at our senior center. Uh, the condensers broke uh, on these two units. Uh, fortunately, there's, <laughs> there's multiple zones, but these are critical uh, uh, pieces. So they were ordered on an emergency basis. Do the seniors know they're out yet? <laughs> <laughs> they, they know they're coming. I bet. Okay. Yep. Good. Okay. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading of the resolution. Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz. Yes. Mrs. Seavey. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2023-98, approving the update of the Solid Waste Management Plan of the Hamilton County Solid Waste Management District, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? Yes, sir. Uh, Hamilton County Resource is uh, updating their 15-year solid waste plan as required by uh, Ohio Environmental Protection Agency. As a partner community, they've asked us to uh, review and uh, approve their, their proposed plan. So uh, us, as well as all of the surrounding communities are, are doing uh, a resolution approving this. Good. Thank you. Any other discussion? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Administrators report. Mr. Miller? Yes, sir. What's going on? Uh, what 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 are they what are they doing We've up there on the pike? Buildings coming up on the pike. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen them. Yeah. What what's up um, up there? If you've if you've driven through Dunkin' Donuts or Arby's, you might have noticed a little bit of work going on behind there. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is uh, uh, they they have started putting on the uh, other facade. So we have we have the precast section over by the pool area. Uh, on the south side, it actually has stamped into it or, or built into it, Delhi. Um, I'll, I'll show you the other uh, facade in a minute, but we, we have some of these, these metal facades, and that is finally starting to go up. Uh, there was a lot of mock-ups of this uh, to, to make sure that it was installed um, you know, at the highest quality possible. Uh, it kind of has an interesting texture. So this is, this is just uh, the, the first portion of it going up on the far west side of the building. Um, actually, where you're standing in this picture will be the, the pre-K playground. But um, it's actually got a pretty, pretty interesting aesthetic. So uh, more to come on that. Um, in contrast, we also have the, uh, the, the brick facade going up. It is two-tone. Uh, the majority of the north face and some of the, some of the south face will have this. Uh, but it's predominantly on the north face of the building. Uh, framing and drywall continue uh, within the building. Uh, this is actually the auditorium area on the second floor. Um, I believe, actually, when I was out there uh, earlier this week, uh, I, th I think this is actually fully, uh, fully sheathed in drywall now, but they are starting to build out the dais area with our, with our you know, uh, multi-purpose meeting rooms on either side of the auditorium. So very, very exciting. Um, 
This is a hallway. No, this, <laughs> this is actually part of the admin area. Um, it's, it's probably not the greatest picture I could show you, but it's, it's nice to see uh, the, the township administration areas really starting to feel like a, 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 true, a true workspace. So uh, exciting time out there. And while they seem slightly behind schedule, I think the, I think the finished schedule, their, their end date is still solid, but they have not started pouring the floor for um, the, the deck around the pool area yet. They're still doing some prep, making sure that compaction of the, of, of the gravel is, um, uh, is appropriate for, for, final, um, for the final pour. So that's, that's underway as we speak now. So not super exciting pictures this, uh, this go around. Uh, I do expect either the, our next meeting or our first meeting in August, you're going you're gonna to see some pretty cool stuff. So stay tuned. Thank you. I have a quick question. Yes, um, I was at a uh, presentation earlier today, as many, many know, and if you don't, Bailey, right here in Delhi, is uh, building a building called Bailey North, and that'll be an independent living building over on North Bend, right across the street, literally across the street from the hospital, and that'll be 80 um, independent living, two, three bedroom, single bedroom. They have diagrams, they have pictures, they are selling them, and they plan on people moving in next April, May, and there's already people signing up. Do we have a plan? Do the apartment, do, you know, can we get that out? Can we? The OK does have a plan. OK. Uh, they are anticipating uh, starting leasing up this, this fall. So I expect to have a full update uh, and details uh, for for the board and for the public uh, come September. Yeah. So. And if the apartments are what we saw when we went on the tour a few months back, they're absolutely beautiful, and uh, right. it's going to look really sharp. Yep. Yeah. So if somebody asks us, can they sign up? Do does PLK want us to send them to them, or should we tell them to just hold on to your horses? Uh, we're not taking a list. We've been fielding that. Uh, you know, our staff has been has been sending them to uh, the, the the leasing agent. Okay. So um, it's not so much a waiting list. They're just they're just collecting all that information. Okay. It, it's very much a stay tuned. We'll get back to you very soon. Okay. So they are amassing names yep. if somebody calls them. Um, Thank you. <clears throat> okay is actually working on trying to trying to site either a leasing trailer on on site or or find some office space um, at an adjacent location. So it's underway. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Very good. Earlier we had a uh, community development, uh, is what we're into now, by the way. Thank you, Tony. And we had the public hearing on the nuisance appeal for the resolution 2023-074 with Mr. Gleason. Now, there is action that is required from this, so we will have to entertain a motion to decide what we're going to do. The motion is either going to be to uphold what was recommended, uh, amend or appeal uh, to resolution 2023-074. That being said, I will open it up to my other uh, trustee members for, for a motion if we have one. Uh, if I may, Mr. Chair, I, I apologize for the typo. Uh, the options will be uphold, amend, or repeal. Thank you, repeal. Resolution. My apologies. That's all right. I almost caught it myself. I thought appeal. I thought that's what we just did. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you. The agenda does say appeal. You, <laughs> yep. you read it correctly. Very good. Uh, do we have a motion? I take that, right? Okay. Motion to uphold the resolution 2023-074. Your motion then is to uphold, which means to go off of what the recommendation was. Tony, will you do a sentence on what, what uphold will mean? Uphold will mean that the resolutions that you declared the property a nuisance for excessive vegetation on May 31st, that resolution 2023-74 will stand as declared a nuisance. Okay. Thank you. Do and we have a second on this and motion? And requires the, the removal of the couch. That's correct, Trustee Seavey. Okay. Is there a second on the motion from Trustee Sturts? I made it. Can I? I need a second on second. your motion. Oh, I'm Is sorry. there a I'm second sorry. on just <laughs> second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Very good. That motion sorry. is upheld. And again, Mr. Gleason, thank you. Thank you for taking the time and just being who you are. Very much appreciated. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, then we're going into declaring nuisance violations, please. Administrator report. 
zoning still with me? Hey, you're still with me. Good. Yeah. Go ahead. So we're reading them. So we're going back to the old way for now. So Mr. Luby is going to read each resolution individually. Um, the 90 is going to read all the properties were in violation this morning still, so we're requesting your board declare them a nuisance. Uh, you'll see your pictures. If you have any individual questions, feel free to ask, and uh, you'll have to vote on each resolution. Okay. Thank That's you. This time, yep. Resolution 2023-99, declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 4643 Shady Lawn Terrace, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2023-100, declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 889 Anderson Ferry Road, declaring emergency and dispensing with the second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? Mr. Roach, this is the property at the corner of Anderson Ferry and Rapid Run. Rapid Run. Okay. We've gotten a lot of conversations about it. Okay. Thank you. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Was there <laughs> other movement on that, Tony, on the other new owners or what they planned on doing? I know they were... Mr. Chair, the last I heard the update we had, I think I reached out to the engineer who was handling the development side of it, and it's in the county engineers right now for just a traffic study right. and the re lining of the lanes and turn lanes and so on and so forth and re um, relining some curb cuts and everything so so we can try and keep it as clean as we can but other than that our hands are pretty tight on it at the time being yes yeah. okay okay i do have a question if i could please yep. um somewhere out there somebody was told if a property is larger than an acre we can't act on that so it is in our code that it, that it, the property is over an acre that that we don't have to enforce but your board has the authority to go ahead and make that decision whether you wanted to move on that or not. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Wow. Thank where you. did that one come from? Oh, it's been there. Really? Oh, yeah. Why wouldn't we act on, I mean, that would be an even bigger violation than a residential. Right. Are, are we talking about undeveloped land or land left to grow naturally? It's more so for undeveloped land and land to grow in its natural state, but, okay. yep. but your board can certainly act on this as well. So. Very good. Thank you. <clears throat> Resolution 2023-101, declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 3935 Delhi Pike, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second rate. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2023-102, declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 419 Sun Air Terrace, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Discussion on this resolution. What is that, Tony? Trash bags? This looks like it's a bunch of trash bags just sitting there on the side of the, the, the house there. Um, is it abandoned? No. It's Owners here? I go by it all the time. Ah, Sun Air is such a beautiful street. Love, love it, love it. Okay, well, we got to do what we got to do. I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2023-103, declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 587 Pedretti Avenue, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes, yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2023-104, declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation at 263 Kinsman Court, 
declaring an emergency and dispensing with second reading. I introduce move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this mm. resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. 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 Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2 2023 105 declaring distance for accumulated debris at 273 Francis Ridge Drive, declaring an emergency and dispensing with second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. Hmm. <laughs> I second the adoption of this resolution. Uh, discussion on this resolution. That obviously didn't happen overnight, I would imagine. Is, it, is there a house moving, or what, uh, what are they doing? Uh, there's a lot going on there, as you can see. Um, it's, there's just a lot of stuff there. It, it, it stems from appliances to building materials to scrap metal. I mean, there's just a lot going on. Can I ask, and I don't know if you can say it in public forum, I mean, have you had more than one complaint on this property? We do, and, and there's a lot of properties aware. This is sometimes, depending on how our trustees' meetings fall, and the people don't, we try to explain our, our nuisance procedure that, you know, they'll call in, we'll say it's in the works, and, and they appreciate that, and just knowing that's coming up at a trustees' meeting, you know, at this time, and you know, hopefully the board declares it, and we can act on it. And, right. And, and for all those watching, this is the, the last thing we want to do. <laughs> we try to get it resolved before it ever comes here. Mm -hmm. Um, it disappoints us uh, tremendously that we even have, have to do things like this. But, again, in fairness to other residents and, and uh, just follow what the codes are. It's pretty and simple. As Administrator Miller says, voluntary compliance is the best compliance, and that's what we try for. Mm -hmm. so. Amen. Thank you. No other discussion? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes, yes. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Resolution passes. Resolution 2023-106, declaring nuisance for excessive vegetation and accumulated debris at 416 Greenwell Avenue, declaring an emergency and dispensing with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on this resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor <coughs> of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes, yes Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz. Yes. Mrs. Seavey. Yes. Mr. Davis. Yes, resolution passes. Resolution 2023-107, declaring nuisance for accumulated debris at 4469 Delhi Pike. Declaring an emergency and dispense with a second reading. I introduce and move the adoption of this resolution. I second the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion on the resolution? I move to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. I second the motion to dispense with the second reading of this resolution. All those in favor of the motion to dispense with the second reading? Yes. Yes, yes Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz? Yes. Mrs. Seavey? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes, resolution passes. Okay. This is the uh, public comment section. I don't have anybody signed in to address the board. Is there anyone who would like to address the board tonight? Please come forward. State your name. I just to the mic, please. Mic. To the mic, please. Thank you. Yeah, he'll turn you on. There, there you go. I just Some enlightenment on the gas thing here in uh, Delhi. Well-known person, spokesman for. Kroger's told me how they do that now. They used to go around and check the speedways as to who dictates the market in Cincinnati. One time I went to Erie, Pennsylvania, and it was the same price here to Erie on the speedway. But uh, they say they hired a company, and I guess it's like a, a gas buddy, that they'll notify Delhi to move their gas at a certain price. And that's, right now I looked on my gas buddy and uh, Dale High's 344 and, and uh, Kroger's and Glenway's 315. So they did hire a company that does that and they, they no longer go around and try to be, you know, when Speedway raise it, they raise it. Yeah, I heard somebody, and I don't know if it's accurate, and I don't want to throw things out there, but someone said that sometimes it's regulated by zip codes and such. Yes, that's right. My uh, uh, which is gas buddies like that. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, why um, else? <laughs> yeah, and uh, again, I don't, I don't want to enter dialogue, but again, it's a fairness and a justice issue. 
because you live in Delhi, you should pay 25 cents, 30 cents more a gallon? And some of the other communities are like that too, Mr. Davis. They'll be as high as uh, Delhi. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Might not be again, on the west side. But. I'm giving a public shout out again to Nick's drive through right across from Kroger's. That's a dime cheaper. Yes. <laughs> My goodness gracious. It's just crazy. Or the UDFs that are all owned by the same, right? Aren't they all owned by the same? Aren't Kroger's all right. owned by the same? And what they're paying for the gas. But to do it in Delhi, I, I, right. it's just crazy. And everyone talks about it. Well, you've got the number. Call up to the state and say, hey, will you look into this? Because it's only going to happen when we all stick together and, yes. and, and have a little army here saying, hey. Another little plug, uh, UDF, you, if you sign up for their UDF drive, they'll send you alert to gas prices, which they did today. Yeah, out. they'll send you alert to go do business out of Delhi. <laughs> it makes no sense. <laughs> but one good thing about UDF, if, if it is 345 now and it goes up 375, you got the midnight and you put in your phone number and it rolls back to 345. Games we have to play. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Did you know UDF down from yeah. Queen City the other day was 309. 309 down down off of Queen City. There you go. Queen City. So yeah, so I guess we're just all millionaires in the township. We can afford all of it, I, I guess. I get 40, 50 cent up here at Crows and I lose it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hey, Thank thanks you. Thanks for the heads up on that. Very good. Well, we do uh, actually have a need for executive session tonight. We will entertain a motion for that, Mr. Luby. Excuse me. We're gonna do community no, events no, first. No, no, no. Wait a minute. We have some community events. We we need to talk about some great community events here in our in our. In we our have our free fishing on Fridays at Clearview Lake. The lake is now open to Delhi residents for catch and release fishing in designated areas on Fridays through September from 7 a.m. until dusk. You can contact the Parks Department with any questions. The Delhi Historical Society Farmhouse Museum is open to the public on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sundays from 12.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. During your visit, you will discover the history of Delhi and how we became the floral paradise of Ohio. If you're unavailable to visit during regular hours, you can schedule by visit, uh, schedule a visit by calling 513-451-4313 or emailing their website. Delhi Parks and Recreation, in cooperation with the Delhi Skyline Chile, St. Dominic Athletic Association, Seton High School, Duber's Carryout, Delhi Hills Kiwanis Club, James J. Luby CPA, Delhi Liquor, Krugler Law, Lori O'Brien, Sipsy Klein, Chandler's Burger Bistro, Jake's Automotive will present the menus on Thursday, July 20th at 7 p.m. And it's at the Park uh, Performance Pavilion. No coolers are permitted, but food and beverages are available for purchase. You can contact the Delhi Parks for more information. That's all we have. Awesome. That great concert there. Next Thursday night, the menus, 7 p.m. Um, now we will entertain a motion to go to executive session. We have a motion to retire to executive session to consider the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, and or compensation of public employees of the township, and to consider the confidential information related to the marketing plans, specific business strategy, trade secrets, or personal financial statements of an applicant for economic development, assistance, and imminent litigation. So moved. Second. Mr. Luby, please call the roll. Mrs. Sturtz, yes. Mrs. Seavey, yes. Mr. Davis. Yes, thank you. We will retire to executive session. Thank you all for being here tonight, those watching from home. Our next meeting will be July 26, 2023, 6 p.m. Have a great uh, rest of the month of July, and see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, everybody.